Okay, I've went ahead and um, created this spreadsheet that I'm asking you to create for Lab 7, and I have that here. I'm going to give you a quick tour of it. So in Lab 7, you are to do a thousand trials, and in each trial you're generating 50 random integers chosen between 1 and capital N. And first off, I have a place up here to select N. Currently it is at 8, so all my random integers that you see in the lower right part of the spreadsheet, those are between 1 and 8. If I were to change this to say 15, then we would be, all these um, integers would be between 1 and 15. Okay, and then in each trial, um, as usual, a row is representing a trial here. I have 50 random numbers between 1 and N. So you'll use the ran between function to get these random numbers. And one thing I just learned, there was a 1R times 50C to show you that there's 50 um, columns in this selection. That's how I've usually, or in the past, that's how I've um, figured out how many columns there are in a selection. But if you come down here, there's a count of how many, um, how many cells are included here. And it looks like if we were to include two rows, it gives me the total of how many cells there are. But since we just have one row, that tells me how many columns. So I indeed have 50 measurements, and these measurements are random integers between 1 and 15. And the focus here is we're wanting to look at the sample variance and the sample standard deviation. So... Uh, so what I'm doing is, when, I, when you compute the variance, you take the value minus the mean squared, and then you average those in some form. Okay. Well, I need to do the value minus the mean squared, and what I've done is done that over here. Okay. So for example, this cell, BB9, that is this value 9 in cell C9 minus the mean and then square it. Now there's one thing that's really important here. What this is trying to simulate is estimating the standard deviation or variance based on a data set. Here we know the underlying distribution. It's a discrete uniform distribution from 1 to 15. In practice, however, that's your goal. You're trying to measure the underlying distribution. So when you take a value and subtract from the mean and square it, you want to make sure and use the sample mean, which is the average of those 50 values in that particular sample. Okay, And if we're wanting to compute, um, let's say, the square difference between this value and the mean, we'd want to take the sample mean from the 50 observations in row 15 and then take the difference and square that. All right, and once we've done that, we can get an estimation for the variance by adding up all these squared deviations, okay, all the way on this example out from BB9 to CY9, add all those up, and then we can either divide by N, and we saw that for variance, that's the maximum likelihood estimator for variance, or we can divide by N minus 1, and that's a bi unbiased estimator for variance. So there's two different ways to estimate the variance, and then here I'm having you estimate the standard deviation, which is just taking the square root of the variances, of course. Okay, so here's our estimates. There's two different types of estimates, so each trial has two estimates for the standard deviation. And then up in these two cells, so somewhere on your spreadsheet, you should display the average of them. So over the thousand trials, um, from row 9 down to row 1008, what's that average, what's the average of the estimate for the standard deviation when I divide by n? Okay, and that's displayed here, and then if I divide by n minus 1, that's displayed here. And of course, if you divide by n minus 1, you're dividing by a smaller number, so the end result's going to be a little bit larger. And what you will find is that dividing by n minus 1 ends up giving us usually a much, much better estimate for the standard deviation. Here I have the more precise, it's not exact because it's rounded to six decimal places, but a, um, a calculated directly from the distribution, not estimated from um, samples, uh, the standard deviation. And to get that, I'm going to pull up the text here. Uh, this example, 2.5.2 .2 on page 26, if x is a uniformly distributed random variable on the set from 1 to n, then the standard deviation is the square root of n squared minus 1 divided by 12. So I'd want to do the square root of this cell squared minus 1 divided by 12. Okay, and that's the actual standard deviation. And you see that both of these values are pretty close.
to this sigma, and that's because we have a pretty good sample size, 50. Um, but the second value divided by m minus 1 is closer. And if I recalculate, it's still closer. If I recalculate, it's still closer. And um, I think you would have to do this for quite a while to find an example um, where dividing by n ends up being closer to the actual value. Okay, So that's why it's standard to divide by m minus 1. When we're computing the sample standard deviation, that's because it gives you a better estimate virtually all the time. It's possible that divided by n would give you a better estimate, but extremely unlikely. Okay, so that's it for this video. Good luck while in the lab, and please do let me know if you get any hang-ups, and um, if you're having trouble figuring out what a formula should be, tell me what formula you're having a hard time with, and um, also if you've done a formula and not sure why it's working, send it along. Put it in a spreadsheet, email it to me, and I'll take a look at it. Good luck.